club folk sabian and before that another song on xfm what was it neil uh jake bug jake bug was it jake bug yeah seen it all <laughs> well I know, I know you have mate but um what was the name of the song <laughs> lovely banter i did i did you can do that with any uh <laughs> yeah what was the name of the sabian song Clubfoot. No, it's just the way I'm standing. I mean, this is this is absolutely <laughs> lovely stuff. So, so, so you go in just after, uh, just after midday on a Saturday, and we are joined by James Acaster. Hello, James. Hi, Josh. What's your favourite song? Uh, it smells like teen spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Not even my favourite song. Just I knew it'd be funny. Yeah, yeah, very good. You're that you're that good. Uh, welcome, oh, James. How you, how you been? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Keeping well? Yeah, very well, thank you. Any news? Had a, had a haircut. Had a haircut. Yeah. And uh, pleased with it? Well, I told you, but you know that I'm not fully satisfied. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit long at the back, but it had been... i am not, not got a mullet, listeners, but, like, it... He'd already, like, cut it once and showed me it, and I said, a bit more off the back, please, and then again, and it was the third time. <laughs> it's, too late. it's too yeah, late, it's too late, then. It's like, I was saying, it's... How much more was he trimming off? A little bit each time, but he was, he, he had loads of stories, so he kept on telling me stories. Uh, Which one is? What about the, the England football squad of the 1980s? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, welcome, James. Uh, we're talking today, uh, as you're aware, about um, lies you got caught in, particularly at school. Mm. And, uh, or just, just lies that people have made up at school. Yeah. And, uh, as you've, you've presumably <laughs> been racking your brains. I, I never told any myself. But um, but one kid, I got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bubble bath for my birthday. Yes. And obviously, I couldn't go into school without running my mouth off about it until I never... No, I thought I got it school without it. Who fancies a shower after sport? Cowabunga? But one of the kids told me, oh yeah, I got that for my birthday. And it's amazing because you put it in the bubble bath. You put it in the bath and then the turtles rise up in bubble form <laughs> out of the out of the bubbles and he told me all the poses they were all doing yeah. like, but, so I sat in the bath but well, you believed him yeah I believed him I, I, I sat in the bath just looking at the bubbles <laughs> intently waiting for them to turn into like Leonardo a, like, and, a, like a magic guy yeah I was like here we go and like, at, at no point did it oh. at one point I was like that could be one of them swimming <laughs> on their back <laughs> that could be splinter <laughs> <laughs> at the very least on the Krang Krang, <laughs> Krang is the only one it could be is that, that brain <laughs> oh, I mean I'd settle for Bebop and Rocksteady at this point <laughs> But, um, um, any others? As a kid who claims that his uncle invented the twister, uh, as in the, the ice cream, cream. <laughs> not, 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 not the game. Yeah. No, yeah, well that's good. And the way we tested him was by saying, uh, "Name the flavors." Then that involved <laughs> in the twister, he, he did it. Pineapple ice his cream. Story checks out. Yeah, yeah. R- raspberry and raspberry and lime uh, of the ice, and then uh, pineapple ice cream. Which I was presumed it was vanilla ice cream. Yeah, well, that, you would have been caught out on that lime. <laughs> so if, you knew the answer. Yeah, we all we all knew, mate. We, we all knew. knew. Well, I, I think I think one kid knew for some reason. Maybe had a, tw- a twister in his bag that he always carried around with him just in case <laughs> someone was lying about. In his cool box. Yeah, yeah. Hold on a sec. But, um, and uh, the, the best one at school was because uh, mm. this one was really it wasn't elaborate, so none of us caught yeah. on to it all the way through secondary school. Uh, a kid called uh, called called Campbell. Uh, was that it? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's all we were say. <laughs> uh, he. His thing was that he went to um, Air Cadets, was the thing, and, and he would tell everyone. And the thing is, is that he got made fun of for it. And, and <laughs> like p- people, and no one thought in a million years it was a lie, because he, he did it all the way from Year Seven, all the way through to we were in GCSEs, and then someone called Andrew Cox decided that he was going to go to Air Cadets as well, uh, <laughs> just to, just to wind up Campbell more than anything. Oh, no. And oh, he no. turned up, and Campbell wasn't there. And he said to the guy, "It's like it's like at the end of a." horror film and the guy <laughs> where's Campbell and the guy went who's Campbell <laughs> and he had never been to Air Cadets that's and amazing it was, that's... It was, it was, and we, we were all the next day at school just all waiting for him just like what Campbell? did he say how did he explain it um, I, I don't think I think I think he just avoided it I can't even remember what his reaction was I remember we all went we can't believe you lied about it and he was just <laughs> oh you know just quite cool about it it's like yeah you know <laughs> I'd well, have, I'd have something to Campbell yeah <laughs> It's astonishing. He, he, he did once tell us that he crashed a jet in a field, and we were. <laughs> he brought that. Well, that was what started the suspicions, yeah, to be honest. So, so, well, James, we'll be talking to you about your uh, classic tropes, and we've got more of them <laughs> coming up. But the, uh, this next song uh, is Tom O'Dell. Uh, what's it called, Neil? Hold me. <laughs> I don't even need. Don't even. Don't even need to do the punchline on that one. Josh Widdicombe. Yes. 
podcast. I'm still joined by James Acaster. Big time. Big time. That's his familiar catchphrase. <laughs> We're talking this morning about lies that you told at school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I maybe got away with, maybe didn't get away with. Uh, what's with Litton producer Neil? What's the topping the league table currently? Um, Dom in Watford. Dom in Watford yeah. with his pretend that, pretending that he was from Sicily. Brilliant. Are you a fan of that one, James? I think it's remarkable. <laughs> Especially if he did it in school. I, I picture, him, picture him as a primary school kid. Yeah. Going around telling people he was <laughs> from Sicily. I think it's amazing. I mean, the knowledge of, of Sicily even existed. Existing at that age. Yeah. I'd like to know, if, if you're still listening, mate, if you can tweet in anything else that you oh, did to back it up. He be... did tweet again to say he's from the north of England, so that was the accent he was peddling at the time. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, Tom, any more any more lies? We're looking for them. Uh, have you got any there, James? I've got one from Pippa here. Uh, she says, I told someone who was chatting me up at a party, which is already, that's an arrogant start. <laughs> In my opinion. Cocky? I mean, I've, I've never, I've never assumed anyone was chatting me up. I mean, even though I'm sure it's happened relentless times to me. Yeah, yeah you never uh, realised. That's your yeah. problem. <laughs> um, I told someone who was chatting me up at a party that I had been in the Ferrera Roche ad. Oh, in brackets, the ambassador one. Now, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you no need to specify. Yeah. But. <laughs> if, you, if you're lying about any others, that is a ridiculous lie. <laughs> you, know the other, you, know, you know the Ferrero Roche ad, I mean? Or the ambassador one? No. <laughs> the, one, I mean, <laughs> the one sat on an alpine ski slope. <laughs> the one with the, the Labrador towing a sled of <laughs> Ferrero Roche. Uh, I, I, I played the Roche thief in the bushes. Um... <laughs> That is an advert I made up, but if Ferrero Rocher are listening <laughs> and they want to they wanna, uh, take on my surreal advert. How, how does this advert work? Uh, there's a Labrador yeah. towing a, a sled full of Ferrero Rochers, <laughs> and uh, Pippa is hiding in a bush dressed as a Rocher thief, which I imagine it has a, a cloak and a hood and a scythe, like yeah. the Grim, Grim Reaper, yeah. uh, and uh, sneaks out of the bushes, and when she goes to take a Rocher, uh, a, yeah. a squirrel. <laughs> a squirrel leaps out and tetanus injections <laughs> and stuff like that. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's all I've got. It tails, so, it tails off. You know, tails I'm off. not in marketing, Josh. Um, <laughs> now, she says because she says the reason that she told the lie was because it hadn't been on TV for ages, which means that she was being <laughs> chatted up and went, "I need a lie because I'm not." Yeah. And what hasn't what advert hasn't been on TV? No for Shake and back. No, <laughs> I was an <in> El Dorado. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so did she say what role she played in the Ferrocho ever? She hasn't, Ferocio, but Ferocio. I mean, I think the ambassador would be a bit too that much of a lie. Or the person that felt like they were being spoilt. Yeah, or the person holding the tray. Oh, yeah. Would be a bit too much. She would have to be... Is the ambassador even in the advert? Yeah, because oh, yeah, he's being talked yeah, to. Someone's, so she couldn't say... She couldn't be the person who says, you're spoiling us. She couldn't be the ambassador. She couldn't be the waiters. She would yeah. have been someone eating a Roche in the background. Yeah. <laughs> But also, Pippa presumably being chatted up at a party, you'd guess 20s or 30s with that kind of... Yeah. And, uh, I mean, she'd have presumably been a child during the Ferrero Rocher advert. That's true. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know, Pippa, she could have been... <laughs> I can't believe we... I mean, we are going into this too much, but let's pursue it. <laughs> um, well, well, I mean, the joke was on Pippa in the end, because apparently... Um, oh, it's, it, her, it, her it, text continues. It reappeared on TV very soon after. <laughs> So the guy well, was obviously... called her on it. <laughs> probably, probably there, <laughs> watching it the next morning together. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning when they yeah, appeared on the TV. <laughs> Where, which one's you then? <laughs> which one's you, Pepper? <laughs> Storming out. Yeah, and then, uh, and then the dog in a sled. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped in it, spilled <laughs> away. <laughs> Don't call me again. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, I mean, poor Pippa. I, I, I think that's the kind of admirable lie, and that's the kind of lie I want the listeners to be peddling. Neil, you've got many tasks this week. If, if the other tasks this week, if at one point you could claim that you were in the front of a Roche advert to, to anyone, you may. If they if they go for it, I'll uh, buy you a box of the uh, aforementioned uh, luxury chocolates. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Can that be a challenge for all listeners? Don't that can be a challenge for all listeners. Yeah, that, do, that, thank you very much. Yeah, very good. Listener challenge. <laughs> yeah, claim you've got that you much money. <laughs> no, but uh, the winner. So what we want you to do is record yourself. Obviously, it can't, <laughs> you can't fake this. If you're going to, just, just buy some Roche, it's cheaper. <laughs> I want a recording of you uh, in a uh, you, in the, of, of you claiming to be in the Ferrero Rocher advert. How do they send it in, Neil? Um, they can send it in at josh at xfm.co.uk. Josh, josh at xfm.co.uk. Any 
recordings of you claiming to be in the Ferrero Rocher advert to a stranger, ideally. And it, as editorial, are we deciding the winner? Yeah, editorial, we are deciding the winner. Yeah, we okay. don't want a BBC scandal on There's our hands. There's only one winner. There's only no. one winner. I know. <laughs> Well, there's two winners, Neil. There's the person that wins, and there's the marketing department of Ferrero Rocher who haven't had this much of a boost in 20 years. I imagine that they're currently on the phone to uh, Battersea Dogstone trying to get hold of a Labrador. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Yes. XFM. This is James Acaster. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We come to the, uh, the crux of the matter, uh, which is uh, your classic scrapes. Indeed. Which has now got its own hashtag. It has. Which people have misread, but let's not go into that. Yep. Not that kind of comic. <laughs> thankfully. Thankfully. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, is your classic scrape a, a scrape from uh, this week or a scrape from the archives? It's from the archives because it's, uh, it's the only time that a lie has got me into oh, yeah. a, a nice. scrape. But nice. I, uh, I, when I, what I, what I used to just have a part-time job in a kitchen yep. I would work 12 hours a week and have a lot of free time yeah. and I would look for any way to fill that time <laughs> whatsoever probably at a low cost considering yeah, your yeah. income yeah <laughs> as long as it was free and uh, once uh, my dad got a letter in the post which um, it just said to the homeowner so I just opened it which I just, <laughs> that's how bored I was yeah and it was, a, it was an invitation uh, addressed to my dad uh to a, a French porcelain exhibition <laughs> at, I'm already um, on board. I'm at the Park on Hotel board. in Kettering. And I, I'm, I waited till my dad got home and said, do you want to go to this? He said, no. I said, are you okay if I just pretend to be you? And he said, well, go on then. <laughs> yeah. But it will be a joint Christmas and birthday present. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I did hear him and my mother having a, a chat later on about how concerned they were about my future. Um, he, he really wanted to go to that porcelain exhibition. I think something was wrong with him. He did <laughs> He used to be filling his time, Diane. But, um, so I went, to, it, was in, it was in the daytime, yeah. uh, two days later, and uh, I turned up, and it was because I, I got, I arrived at the reception, said I was here for the porcelain exhibition, <laughs> and, uh, and they, they sent me through to this little room where there was a buffet. It was quite a lovely spread, to be honest. Yeah. But then, like, it was me and ten elderly people. Everyone else was, uh, <laughs> at least in their mid-seventies. I was, I was, at the time, I think I was 19. Were you labouring under the kind of idea that you were David Acaster? Yeah, so I was turning up as David Acaster. <laughs> okay, you're a very young homeowner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, hey guys, I'm pretty successful. <laughs> and, uh, everyone else very old. Yeah, and, uh, understandably. Yeah. And then the doors opened to this main room we got ushered into there and it wasn't an exhibition at all. It was, it was basically, there was a table, at the far end of a big, big long room, there was a long table, like, oh, all of a sudden, we, we, all, we all told us to stand behind that in, in a line, like a police lineup. Yeah. And then the other side of that, there <laughs> was... they said, which one of these people... <laughs> has lied. Has lied. <laughs> About their identity. <laughs> um, there was like, there was like a... Do you talk about this like this is a normal situation? At this point, alarm bells not ringing. Yeah, at this point, I was like, oh, no. I never, I never, I never find scrape I've got myself into. It's just, so, it's standing there. There was this, um, behind the table, there was, like, these shelves that all had, like, porcelain, like, so plate, in the right dishes place. and plates. I was like, well, you know, maybe the, at the time, yeah. to be honest, I was thinking this is the worst exhibition yeah. ever. This is just some porcelain. Just and then uh, behind that, there was, like, a big screen like a partition and uh this man walked from behind it this uh this big tall guy in a suit and glasses and uh he said it's a french guy i'm not gonna do the accent <laughs> he said go on have a go welcome <laughs> don't don't do it no don't. uh, uh <laughs> he said uh he said welcome my name is michelle yeah and when he said Michelle, one of the old guys really laughed for ages. <laughs> like, one of the old men couldn't stop laughing that this guy's name is a man called Michelle. Yeah, classic, um, classic scrape. Yeah, and uh, he said... That uh, better not be the end of the scrape. Yeah, yeah, and then we went home. <laughs> uh, uh, but he, he said, yes, uh, Limash is the name of the porcelain yeah. company. And he said, uh, it's one of the most respected porcelain companies in the whole world. You have been selected, you're a very lucky few. Uh -huh. uh, one of you will be walking home today oh, no. with uh, over £5,000 worth of French porcelain for free. Wow. Um, That's a bargain. Yeah, we were there like, oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> this is a... I was like, I was like, Anyone it, would say you might have walked into a massive con here. I, at the time, I thought, if all we have to do to win this is some physical exercise, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to win. If, it, if, if it's a Royal Rumble... <laughs> The assault course on the Krypton factor. <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah, if we're doing the Travelator and the Gladiators. <laughs> um, 
I said, uh, you know, to, to, to decide which one of you will walk away with the porcelain, I hand over to my, my assistant, Juliet. And then he, basically, Michelle went back, back behind the partition. <laughs> but it turned out he was way too tall. <laughs> like, you could see his head if he stood behind it. So he had to crouch, and I was right at the end of the line, so I could see him. And he was crouching with his hands on his knees. And his job for the rest of the uh, presentation was to shush the old people when they got too <laughs> excited. So every now and again, they'd start talking, and he'd just go, really loud <laughs> when you said he went behind the partition I was hoping he'd come out with a wig on bonsoir my name is Gla- glasses off <laughs> um, but Juliet came out and, and she was telling us all about the history was she of French it. she was French yeah, yeah. Uh, slightly higher voice um, pretty much the accent that I did before and uh, <laughs> and she was telling us the history of it and uh, how, how respected it is and um the, the most embarrassing bit, she, she got one of the plates, uh, and each plate had like a different flower or something painted on it. Yeah. And one of them had a, had a, had a thistle on it. And uh, I'm, I'm very, my, my, my accent's quite lazy. I don't do TH sounds, and say, I just say Fs. Yeah. And it turns out there's no TH sounds in the French language, so they struggle with it as well. <laughs> but they make the effort. Yeah. So she went, uh, on here is a French thistle? <laughs> like that. <laughs> And all the old people, instead of letting it go, just went, it's a thistle. Uh, oh, and, then, and then for about five minutes, back and forth, it was going, thistle? <laughs> thistle? Thistle? <laughs> thistle? Thistle? <laughs> and uh, that, was, that was one of the best things I've ever seen. But um, <laughs> she, she passed a plate to one of the old ladies, and she said, yeah. say you get this out of your uh, cupboard, what's the first thing you do with it? And the old lady didn't know what to do. She panicked and licked the plate. <laughs> just just li- licked it properly up. It just held it I mean, with two is, hands. That is a panic. It gave it full on the whole width of the plate. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, and, well, there's uh, no width, James. The plates. Sorry, uh, was it <laughs> no, radius? No, radius <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <the plate. laughs> but uh, licked it. Diamond. Okay. And then uh, obviously Juliet shook her head and said, "No, you would turn it round and you would look at the official Lamarche stamp on the back." And that was bloody hell. Quite awkward. Ju- Juliet's fun to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But at the end, she basically said, um, uh, this is how we decide who's going to walk away with this yeah. porcelain. So she said, put you, you, three simple questions. If you answer these questions correctly, you win the porcelain. Oh, so I was like, right, here we go. You must have been very excited. Yeah. First question was, did you like the porcelain <laughs> <laughs> I showed you today? One. Yeah, ha- straight away. Ha- hands up if you liked them. No one went out in the first round. <laughs> question two... <laughs> Are you thinking I'm in it? Oh, for this is looking good. Question two. Do you remember the war? Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> Question two. Who, who would like to have some of this porcelain <laughs> for free? It's still in the game. Still, uh, but the so thing is... Any fallers at that stage? No. And the thing is, is that Juliet went along the line counting the hands up both times. <laughs> like, probably, and she got to me at the end of the second round, and she and she looked at me and went... I'll have you know, I am a psychologist, and I can tell if you are lying. <laughs> I was like, oh, I would genuinely like this porcelain for free. Yeah, I'm not. I'm only working twelve hours a week. Yeah. Third question. Yeah. Was if we give you this porcelain for free, would you be prepared to have your initials engraved on the back of every single bit of porcelain, which costs five hundred pounds per initial? <laughs> All the hands went down apart from one lady. Oh no. And Juliet went, everyone with their hands down, get out of the room, you're eliminated. And as we walked out, the last thing I saw before I went through the door, I turned around, I saw the old lady with her hand up. Slowly, she, she started looking around and realised she was the only one with her hand up still. And the last thing I saw was her punch in the air in celebration. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that, that is ever. an astonishing scrape. <laughs> No, not so much for you as the old lady. It's mainly a scrape for me, that old lady. And now, every time really you go to a house, you do check the back to see whether her initials are on it. And if yeah. it's the same old lady. Oh, she's licked, licked the front. <laughs> Was it the liquor? <laughs> I don't think it might have been. It might have been the liquor. But apparently she had a point to prove by the end. She licks off it. She licks every plate to make sure the initials don't come off. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. X. XFM. That is just about all we've got time for, Neil. Um, I'm going to bid you farewell. Bye. Bye. Cheers, mate. And um, do I need? Do I get the countdown on my? Uh, uh, let's let's count this down. It's well. only fair, isn't it? Okay. It is. You ready? Ready. Go. So you can follow me on Twitter at Josh <laughs> Uh If you want to come to see uh, my DVD record at Hammersmith Apollo, September the 26th. Uh, tickets, if you Google that, it's with Sean Walsh. What a bargain! What an absolute bargain! And this week, the corporate my t- Sean Walsh. 
Oi, it's not it's not your time anymore, Joe. And um, uh, this week, uh, tomorrow night, Cambridge. Monday night, Glasgow. Thursday night, Maidstone. And Saturday night next week, Much Wenlock. If you're in any of those places, come along to see me live. Thank you very much, Neil. It's been an absolute pleasure. I, I got in exactly the right time there, didn't I? About the podcast. Oh, dear. Awkward. <laughs> We've run out of time. Hoist by our own petard. Josh Whittaker. Podcast. X. XFM. <gasps> If you like this podcast, why not check out some of the other great ones available to download at xfm.co.uk. X. XFM. The XFM Breakfast Show with John Holmes. So that's uh, that's Joe Goods with special guest Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> from one. And then from ten tonight, John Kennedy has too much information. You're listening to Exposure on XFM, and I'm very pleased to say my favourite one night stand um, <laughs> was somebody called Deborah from Croydon who I jimmy jammied like a god on the top floor of a hotel in London which was absolutely fantastic wow. I got really excited and there's this really nice video of it uh, that you can check out <laughs> online Whoa. Yeah. too much really music, music. it rocks XFM